some of you may know that I have a bit of an affinity for building little portable audio gear. Uh, what you're looking at here is uh, my, one of my high school projects, which is a four channel test amplifier with an internal 7 amp hour lenticid battery, which uh, still works just fine several years later, even the battery works, which is insane. It's a used UPS battery from an APC UPS, and you probably know how, in what conditions those usually are. And this is built around some generic uh, car stereo amplified chip, which is linear, boring, simple to implement, and generally indestructible. And this is a little Chinese module based Class D mono thing I built uh, just a few months ago. And uh, I've already used this on a trip to the mainland, and it served me quite well. But uh, what none of these can do is provide me with a, a bit more hi-fi and loudness, which is why I've taken out this thing, which has been sitting on a shelf for several years by now. This is a Mission brand center speaker for some 5.1 home theatre thing. And I've never used a 5.1 system, I don't care much for surround, so I've never used it. It was given to me for free, I don't know why. So I figured I'd try and do something out of it, and I figured I'd make it a bit interesting. Since uh, one of the reasons I haven't used this for something else before is because I never ever liked the sound of it. It's a center speaker and uh, it's designed for speech, uh, basically. It rolls off at about 125 hertz, which is terrible for anything except for a 5.1 system center speaker. But this thing does have two drivers in it, plus a tweeter, and uh, it has ports which you can shove socks into. So, I've spent a couple of days now, I've disconnected this speaker, just run cables out through one of the ports, and I've uh, played around with by amplifying this thing, and by using a measurement microphone and this uh, terrible, broken, cheap, bearing a uh, two-way crossover, I've managed to press the performance of this thing into quite impressive territory. I basically managed to get it to perform acceptably down to about 30 Hz, although it does suffer from quite significant distortion at that low frequency due to both of these speakers sharing the same acoustic chamber. But uh, that's not really my main concern, since uh, yeah, this thing is... like It, it has about 10% total harmonic distortion at 40 Hz, which is uh, yeah probably on par with the uh, center of the Logitech computer speakers. Well, but uh, it, it's good enough. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. And uh, what I'm going to do with this thing is uh, I'm hoping to be able to use these uh, two batteries these are 6-cell HP laptop batteries, uh, which I'm going to basically take apart and put in series and uh, use the protection circuits out of. And basically make uh, a 25-ish volt uh, battery pack. And uh, thanks to the kind donation of a viewer, uh, I ha have about a 50 euros budget for doing this thing. So I've ordered a Class D TPA chip based uh, amplifier of a Banggood, actually two different ones, so I'm going to have to see which one is the best. And I'm going to use that uh, in, with this 25 volt battery pack uh, to make a rather nice package out of this thing. I would use just uh, another cheapo TDA 2020 or 2024 based uh, thing like I did in the last little speaker, but these are 12 ohm drivers and uh, I I'm basically not going to be able to get any sound out of them at uh, 12 volts. So I need the higher voltage in order to do this. And uh, I have spent quite a lot of time measuring this thing, 
just uh, close proximity measurements with a measurement microphone and uh, I've come up with this uh, filter right here and uh, this was of course taken as a much higher resolution than this monitor but you can see that we have a huge amount of gain on the low frequency uh, driver and uh, a bit of a drop out in the crossover region at about 200 and something hertz and let's see, we have 75... Uh, 50, yeah, we've got like 15 decibels there so we're basically adding yeah, about 15 decibels to the low end driver over the mid range and uh, high uh, drivers the the filter for the high driver by the way is still the passive filter which was uh, built into uh, this speaker and uh, it has a bit of a crossover drop out but I don't quite care let's see it has the total system frequency response I've been able to get out of this thing and I must say I'm quite impressed so looking at this chart we have 5 decibels per division and uh, we basically have a total system frequency response if we include the fact that the low end driver can be adjusted independently of the rest we basically have a system frequency response of within about 10 decibels which is uh, quite okay uh, this here is the uh, drop out of the tweeter passive filter and I think this is mostly due to the fact that I was measuring very close range this is probably going to look a lot better if you step back a bit but since I'm not in a properly same treated room I can't do uh, far range measurements but it doesn't if, if you listen to it it doesn't have a drop out like this in practicality and uh, yeah I'm not certain what this drop off is it might actually be the tweet just dropping off but I think that also has to do with the fact that it was measuring close range and not perfectly on axis because what I was interested in was of course the low end performance since that's what I've been modifying and the previous frequency response basically had a rock solid drop off around there it just wouldn't make a sound below 125 hertz and I've extended that down to let's say 20, 30, maybe 30, 35 hertz very bait is where it drops off now which is uh, <laughs> really quite impressive for a speaker in this package it's not a huge speaker, these are about 4 inch drivers each now of course getting this kind of low-end performance out of a a system this small does come at several drawbacks. The most obvious one is that uh, this thing is not going to play very loud at all. It uh, can do loud enough, I would say, but I just, I never listen to music extremely loudly. It's just not a thing I do. So I, I find a compromise which gives it suitable performance for my needs. But the other obvious issue which arises when you press something like this down to these kind of frequencies is that you're going to end up with a huge amount of harmonic distortion and uh, this is the distortion waveform measured with a sine wave at 31 Hz and has the fundamental frequency has the second harmonic and we've got 17% THD going so this thing doesn't sound very good in the low range at all but uh, it too doesn't really matter since this isn't really going to be intended to be any kind of uh, hi-fi system although I did use that word before uh, but you know this thing is supposed to be basically planted somewhere if I'm out working with a car or something I'll be able to put this thing down and have a quite acceptable uh, sound quality out of a compact battery powered package which uh, is going to have quite significant run time I mean one of these uh, six cell batteries has about uh, 50 watt hours in it and uh, depending on how many cells I actually use uh, I'm going to have 50 or 100 watt hours to use and 
one of these little class D amplifiers is going to have a quiescent curve of about uh, 20 milliamps. Now I'm the level cell is not I'm probably going to average uh, you know a couple of watts going out of this thing. So that's going to give me I would expect at least 10 hours runtime out of uh, one singular battery uh, at my normal levels and probably three or four hours at very very late volume as far as I'm concerned. So that's what uh, is going to happen with this speaker now. And of course this is going to be a two-part video. I'm terrible at making two or multi-part videos because I can never be bothered to shoot the second or third parts. But uh, if you're lucky I'll actually bother and you'll be seeing some updates on this thing shortly. And I'm of course going to have to make uh, a filter which mimics the settings I've got on this thing right now. I've measured them so I know which kinds of gains and curves I want out of my filter. I'm going to have to make some kind of front panel. I'll probably just drill holes in the case like I did with the little speaker thing I made the last time. And I'm going to have to hack uh, some kind of control circuit for the batteries and I'm going to have to figure out a power supply. That's the main issue at hand right now. Because I'm going to take these batteries apart. The protection circuits you get in laptop batteries are a bit varied in quality. Usually the cheaper brands will work just fine without an actual computer hooked up to them and indeed that's what I did on the other speaker just took an old Asus battery I think and a jury rigged it to work with no computer but I know HP batteries tend not to be quite as fun so I might have to find some other batteries to work with but I've got you know a few laptops to choose from so it's probably not going to be an issue and then I'm going to have to build some kind of charger power supply for it which is probably going to be very basic uh, something like uh, a 30 volt uh, printer power supply and an L200 linear voltage regulator charging the battery after that I'll go with undercharging slightly in order to avoid uh, any danger and of course there's protection circuitry in the batteries so if you're in luck you'll have to stay tuned and find out if you're not in luck, I'll just post a video of when this thing is finished in like half a year. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.